Greetings. Tony from Old River Hard Goods again. I'm not sure what button I pushed on that last video, but I must have hit it with a 20-pound sledgehammer because it's got over 10,000 views and a whole bunch of likes and making it my second most popular video ever. And we also picked up a bunch of new subscribers here. And for those of you who don't know, I've been restoring and selling old tools, that's old hand tools, since 1994, almost 30 years. I've been doing it full time since about 2005. And if you want to call seven days a week and 12 hours a day full time, but that's just me. And I know some folks complain about the camera work, they complain about how I look, they complain about how I talk, they complain about this, they complain about that. But I ain't making any money doing these videos. All I'm doing is just trying to share some of the knowledge I've accumulated in my long history with working with these tools, as well as sharing some of the history of them. And yeah, there's things I could probably do better, but let's face it, you know, there's only so many hours in a minute anymore. And I'm, you know, I'm putting one of these guys together. It takes probably a good day, all said and done. You may not think so because it's a 20-minute video, but let me tell you, that ain't how it works. Anyways, this video here, we're going to do a little differently this time. I'm going to start off with the flea market segment. And then talk about some of the tools, being the chisels, carving tools, and other tools I picked up this time around in a little more detail. So, sit back, buckle up. And enjoy. I'll tell you, Saturday morning at the flea market started off looking pretty bleak. I walked around for over 45 minutes, clocked over 2,000 steps, and didn't see a blinking thing. But then all of a sudden, the tool started showing up. And this is the first batch, so here we go. There's a fence for a Stanley A. 78 the aluminum version those things are freaking uncommon stanley 42 saw set needs some cleaning a stanley v logo blades and backwards number 51 spoke shave a general uh, bevel square kind of looks like a craftsman small turn screw a uh, larger gimlet bit to add to the pile. A hand forged striking iron or tool for doing layout work. Stanley 47 auger bit depth gauge. Haven't seen one of them in a long time. This is a good L Pratt uh, gauge of some sort. I'm not sure if it's complete or not. I'll have to do some research on it, but it can be used as a depth or Inside, outside. You see, it's kind of loose, but yeah, it's still kind of neat. An unmarked uh, pattern tracing or stitch marking wheel. A neat hand forged turn screw. A Stanley V logo again. Uh, if you're not familiar with the V logo, that was used on Stanley tools between 1910 and 1920 prior to the Sweetheart mark. Tri-square, eh, it's got some patina, but nothing too bad. A pair of jewelers pliers. This one's got the round and flat jaw. This one's got the double round jaws. A couple of engraving tools I had to pay a little money to get, but I just ain't been finding them. And what's probably going to be one of the catches of the day is this wooden router. That is signed and dated 1861. Pretty neat. So, that's round one. Round two is the chisels. Oh, my Lord, I got a bunch of work to do. I'm not going to go too crazy with describing them all. You can just take them in, but there's a firmer, 
couple of bench gouges, a PS&W framing mortising chisel. Uh, here's another one. I do have a handle for this one stuck in the box. Kind of rough uh, bench gouge there. This is kind of neat. Somebody modified, I'm guessing, for turning work. It's either a bit or an old chisel, hard to say. It's a carving tool chisel. This should have been with the miscellaneous stuff, but this is a Starrett. Uh, where's the model number on it? Oh, there it is. 514B. Upside down. Whatever. This goes on the end of a, uh, a steel tape. Give you a hook for the end of it. Yeah, I know. Exciting. Uh, another socket gouge. Lathe parting tool. This one's neat. This is a gauged um, lathe tool. Early one with the brass. Handle's a little rough. User made. Buck Brothers cast steel skew lathe tool. Chisel. That'll clean up real nice. Here we got another carving tool. V gouge. Another lathe tool. This one looks like it's a butcher. Four more carving tools. Of Various conditions. Another couple other firmers. Any pick sticker style mortising chisel. It's kind of rough. Tangs a little short, but we'll figure something out. So, anyways, off to work. Well, here are a few of those chisels from that pile. The upper one is a 7 8 inch. Mortising Timber Framing Chisel by PS&W, Pextow and Wilcox, which later became Pextow. And that one cleaned up pretty well. A little frosting on the back, but that's nothing bad at all. Socket's good. Somebody did a little excavating here around the bang ring. Probably got a little chipping going there, and they just carved it out. But you see that a lot. The handle's good. I actually got two of these bad boys in that lot. And this was the first one I cleaned up. Next up is this James Swan bench gouge. This is a 5 8 inch size. And this one also cleaned up pretty well. Socket's got a ding on the one side, but back and inside the sweep are good. Now, bench gouges are came in three sweeps regular which is what this is a deeper sweep which is more of a u-shaped and just a shallow um, or a flat sweep as it's called both the flat and the deep sweeps in this style of gouge are, are kind of hard to come by they not impossible but they're hard to come by and i've had conversations with guys you know, wanting to know the carving tool size sweep. Well, that's not how these guys were made. You know, but anyways. And another one. Another 5 8 inch gouge. And I measured on the inside of the sweep here. This one is a peck stove, you can see here. And again, this one cleaned up pretty well. Not too much patina. Handles good. So that was the start of the chisel pile. Next up, we're going to take a look at some of the carving tools that came out of that lot. This one is an SJ Addis V carving tool. This one, oh, I forget the number on hand, but this is the 90 degree angle one. A lot of them you see are the 60 degree. This is the 90 degree angle one. I'll have to look up the model number on that. This one is a number 17 bent gouge, also by Mr. S.J. This one is a number 21, which is a bent chisel. That's that one. And the last is a J.B. Addis and Sons, or Son, I forget. Uh, this one is a bent V. And this one's also... Uh, that one. Yeah, that one's also the 90 degree. 
and I forget the, you can kind of see the number there, probably better than I can, so. But anyways, these also clean up pretty well. This one's got one little spot of pit in the middle. It's way down from the edge, so we don't worry about that. Handles are good for the most part. A couple of them have a user mark on them. Uh, this one's missing a ferrule. This one has some worm tracks and what have you. But, hey, you know, good carving tools are not getting any easier to find, at least, at least where I do my shopping. And last of these tools we're going to talk about, the edge tools, are the lathe tools. Up top is a parting or sizing tool. These are very uncommon. I have an average, if I'm lucky, one a year, and it's probably been much less than that. I had a Buck Brothers one last year, but this one isn't signed, and Frame's got a little patina to it, but the blade's good. Nice and sharp and shiny. Clamp works. Handle looks like it was user crafted. And this one might even be user made, who knows? But you know, checking it and some stains, but I tell you this is a neat tool and uh, like I said, they're pretty hard to come by. And here's one of the Buck Brothers gauges. The gauge itself isn't signed, but it's identical to the ones they have in the Buck Brothers catalogs. And I found orphan ones as well. This one did come with the chisel. And like I said, they are few and very far between. Moving on. Here we got this Buck Brothers skew chisel, three quarters of an inch cast steel. And this one cleaned up pretty well. There's a few spots I need to dress out on it. It's a little sandpaper. A little roughness down here in the uh, lower end where it wasn't wasn't hardened. But uh, nobody worries about that too much. And, you know, this is a good, good tool. Many years ago, back on eBay, I had, uh, I don't know if it was a Buck Brothers or a Butcher. But some clown messaged me and asked... Is it HSS? And I said, no, it's cast steel. It's not HSS. Well, then it's, he messaged me back. He said, well, then it's no, no good because you can't do any real work without having HSS. To which I replied, well, you know, for many, many years, like hundreds or even thousands of years, people turn not only wood, but they turn brass, they turn bone, they turned ivory, they turned iron, they even turned mild steel. And they didn't have no HSS then. He said, oh no, they must have had something else to use. You know, you just don't know what you're talking about. Well, at that point, I decided he went on the block bidders list. And back in those days, eBay's messaging system didn't have quite the naughty word filter that it has these days so I kind of let him have it with both barrels and after I ignored a bunch of his messages he kind of got the idea but what are you going to do right anyways next one of the Buck Brothers this one just has the uh, logo on the end I don't know if it's Castile or not as a parting tool it needs a handle but these were sold without handles. You could buy them, you know, naked blades or with handles. So this one too also got some stains. I'm gonna to need to do a little more work on it to get it uh, get it in tip top shape. And last up on this batch is this W Butcher spindle gouge. I might have called it a bowl gouge in the other first part of the video, but it is a spindle gouge. 7 sixteenths of an inch and this guy is in right fine shape considering that it's kicking what 145 150 years old i mean the inside of the sweep is clean the back is fairly clean just a little staining don't know what kind of wood that handle is but that guy is solid and the edge is good and let me tell you, this is a this is a quality tool, just like those Buck Brothers up there that 
you know, unfortunately, people get some silly ideas, or, of course, you know, a lot of wood they're turning these days has got a silica content of a 1960s Coca-Cola bottle, so that kind of affects things, but, you know, if you're just working regular wood, this is a good, good tool. That's it for the lathe tool. And here we're going to take a look at the last of the tools I'm showing from that batch. This is wooden D-router plane. Uh, this is made of oak, very dark oak. And it was made by J.H. Harper in 1861. He made his mark a couple other places. He also put his initials on the blade. And this turned out in pretty good shape. Of course, I did some cleaning on it, but... Sole's got a little roughness and wear, but you know, the thing was used. There's a little chipping around the mouth, but... Blade's a little on the short side, but at least it's there. A lot of times you find these guys and the blades are gone. And let me tell you, this is one gorgeous tool. A little staining as well. Lord only knows where it's been the past 150 years or so, but this is a great looking example of this, this tool and still a decent user as far as I'm concerned. Well, that's it for this one, folks. Uh, Sunday flea markets got Rains are threatened to be rained out, and Wednesday's market was pretty bleak. But as I mentioned at the end of the last video, this is Jacktown coming up this weekend, although the weather's looking kind of iffy for that. But we're going to take the ride and see what happens. So, anyways, thanks for watching, and if you like what you're seeing, please hit that subscribe button to be notified when new videos are posted. Have a great day!